Light is an electromagnetic wave, but it also behaves like a particle. If you are familiar with the photoelectric effect, then you saw that light could behave as a particle. Now, if nature is symmetric, then a particle like an electron or a proton should also behave like a wave. Great thinking. Obviously not mine, but this is what D. Progley proposed. Now, lesser mortals like you and me would say, okay, I accept this since such a great scientist is saying this, but has anyone seen this happen? Yes. Actually, Davison and Germer experiment did provide experimental confirmation of what D. Broglie said. Their experiment involved the diffraction of electrons and you know that diffraction is a wave phenomenon. So now we are talking of particles exhibiting a wave-like behavior and this is what we are going to look at in this lesson. Okay, now let's look at the experimental setup. You have a piece of nickel over here which is placed and you have a beam of electrons. So this is a beam of electrons which is directed at the electrons. This is a beam of electrons which is directed at the target and the target over here is a nickel. Now electrons, the electrons are emitted from a heated filament and they are accelerated by the electrodes in the electron gun. And then they are directed at the crystal. I haven't drawn that part over here. So I have just taken a beam of electrons. Now the number of electrons which are bouncing off at various angles. You will have angle electrons bouncing off at various angles. That is noted. Now from this experiment what were they expecting to find? They were expecting that the electron beam would be diffusely reflected and there would be a smooth distribution of intensity at as the angle theta was varied. As theta was varied, they, were, they thought that they would get a uniform distribution of electrons. Now what they observed was something very different. strong maxima in the intensity which means a very large number of reflected electrons were seen at some particular angles. Like if you plot a graph between intensity and the angle at some specific angles there was a large deflection of electrons. Now Davison and Germer thought that there is some similarity between the results that they got over here and the X-ray diffraction experiments that had been done earlier. From this they concluded that the electron beam was being diffracted and this was a direct experimental evidence of D. Broglie's wave hypothesis. Let's say these are the incident waves and these are the scattered waves. I am assuming an accelerating voltage of 54 volts which means the electrons have been accelerated through a potential difference of 54 volts. Now for these electrons the maxima was observed at 50 degrees. So this results from constructive interference between electron waves which are scattered from various atoms that are present on the surface of the crystal and these rows of atoms are acting like a reflection diffraction grating. Now the condition for maximum reflection is given by d sin theta equals m times lambda where m takes integer values 1, 2, 3 etc. It is a positive integer. And D is the distance between adjacent atoms in the surface plane because most of the electrons will get reflected from the atoms which are present on the surface. This was one value of voltage that I took at 54 volts. You observe a maxima at 50 degrees. Now let's say the accelerating voltage 
is changed to 1400 volts which means the electrons have a still greater velocity than the maxima was observed at 34 degrees. So the angular position of the maxima is varying with the accelerated voltage is varying with the accelerating voltage which is used to produce the electron beam. Now let's just take a look at the formula which we are using to show this. The de Broglie wavelength of a particle is given by lambda is equal to h by p where p is the momentum of the particle which can be written as h over mv. Now let us express the wavelength of the particle in terms of its kinetic energy. See an electron that is initially at rest, its initial velocity is 0 and if it is accelerated through a potential difference of Vb minus Va, which means the electron is accelerated from point A to point B and it acquires a velocity. In this case, the work done on the electron which is E times VBA is equal to the kinetic energy of the electron which is half mv square. So this can be written as p square over 2m because p is equal to mv. So now we can write the momentum p as 2me v b a and square root. So now you can write the de Broglie wavelength lambda as h over under root 2 m e v b a. Okay now let's look at the value of wavelength associated with electrons one using the diffract one using the diffraction formula which is d sin theta equals m lambda and we are going to take the value of m as 1. And then we are going to use de Broglie's hypothesis which gives us lambda equal to h over p and we will write that as square root of 2 m e v v a which is the potential difference through which the electrons are being accelerated. Now in an electron diffraction experiment say for an for an accelerating voltage of 54 volts, intensity maximum occurs at theta equal to 50 degrees. Taking initial kinetic energy as 0 which means assuming that initially the electrons are at rest and the distance between the rows of atoms which are acting as a diffraction grating is 2.15 into 10 to the power minus 10 meter. Now using the first formula we have lambda equals d sin theta. Now if you plug in all these values this works out to be 1.65 into 10 to the power minus 10 meter and in the second case if you use the second formula which is de Broglie's hypothesis we have lambda equals h over mv which is h over we've expressed the momentum in terms of the potential difference because that is the energy which the electrons acquire in the electron gun in this experiment. So now if you plug in all the values, H is Planck's constant, M is the mass of the electrons, E is the charge of the electrons and V is the accelerating voltage which is 54 volts, you get a value of 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 10 meter. Now these two values agree within the limits of experimental error. This is 1.67 and 1.65 and 1.67. So since the two agree, this shows that the particle in this case which were electrons does behave like a wave and the wavelength is given by lambda equals h over p. So this was the experimental confirmation of de Broglie's hypothesis. He showed that electrons were behaving like waves.